Hey guys, it's Whitney and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you guys some handstands tips and tricks. So whether you're a beginner just learning your handstand or you already have your handstand and are hoping to improve it or hold it longer, these are the techniques that I use to get my handstand to where it is today. So, let's get started. So the first thing you need to do when you're learning your handstand is you need to gain the proper strength and form. And the best way to do that is against the wall. So I'm using this wall. Doesn't matter what wall you use. It could be in your bedroom, in your kitchen, wherever. But you're going to want to make sure that you squeeze your butt and push really tall through your shoulders and point your toes. I mean, you don't really have to, but it looks better if you do. So you're going to want to put your hands like a couple inches away from the wall, pretty close. And you want to make sure that you're in a straight line. So whether you take a picture of yourself and see it or not, but you don't want to arch and you don't want to sag. You want to make sure you're in a straight line and just hold it for as long as you think. You should get a pretty good workout. <laughs> So once you feel confident to move away from the wall, this is usually a pretty easy step, depending on how hard you want to push yourself. But the next thing you want to do is just try it. So the way you want to go into your handstand, you want to bend your front leg. Go ahead and put your hands on the ground in like this like T position. And then you're going to push off of that leg. Now when you're first learning your handstand, it will probably look something like this. And that is perfectly okay as long as you're safe, you have your arms straight and you're pushing tight. It's perfectly fine to go short. You just want to practice and practice and practice to gradually get your handstand up to a straight line. So eventually, you'll go from this to this to this, to this. So that is the step that takes the most practice and practice makes perfect. And one more thing, usually once you start getting up to that handstand, it's very common that you start falling over, like kicking too much, and that looks like this. So to prevent this, you want to make sure you're nice and slow. You don't want to throw it over. <laughs> so make sure that your butt is super tight. But if you do happen to fall over, you want to make sure that you're very safe. Make sure you have a clear surrounding. And if you do fall over, go ahead and do like a cartwheel. You don't want to like, you don't want to like back flop. <laughs> so it hurts. <laughs> So once you've practiced enough and you can get your handstand to vertical and you can consistently like kick it up there, you're going to want to start holding it so you can like, you know, show it off like duh. So to do that, there's a couple of secrets to holding the handstand. One, breathing. When you breathe, you want to take slow and steady breaths through your stomach. You don't want to breathe through your chest because watch what happens when I breathe through my chest. It moves your whole shape. Because when you're breathing like <sighs> it's not good for your handstand. You want to breathe through your stomach because that doesn't affect your shape. Now, number two, we're going to move down to the fingers. Now, this I think is the most important part of your handstand because if you don't have your fingers, you can just easily fall over. So, it's hard to explain this, but this is what I use with my fingers. So I bend them like that, so that it's an angle up, an angle down, and then flat. So this will help you balance, because if you're falling, you have like more strength in your fingers to save it. And if your fingers are straight like this, it's going to be a lot harder. So yeah, you really, really, really want to practice using your fingers to grip the floor so that you can hold it. I think that this is the most important part because if you watch my handstand, 
you can see that my hands are constantly moving because I have to find the center of gravity with my fingers. So as you can see, my fingers were constantly moving so that I could stay up in my hands. So, I've told you my breathing and finger secrets. So, now we're going to move to a second wall drill. This time, you're going to want to put your hands further out, maybe like a foot and a half away, or however far you think. So, you're going to put your hands down, you're going to put one leg straight up, and you're going to rest one leg on the wall. Then you're going to kick and just try and hold it on your own. And if you ever need to fall back, the wall's right there to catch you. So I'm going to demonstrate. Oops. <laughs> so I have my hands out here. I'm going to take one of my uh, legs and put it straight up. Then I'm going to kick, kick this leg and try and hold it on my own. And if you're new and you fall, the wall's right there. So. Don't be scared. And remember to use your breathing and finger techniques. You should just see how long you can hold it. That's, I think that's one of the most effective drills in holding your handstand. Because it's like the wall's right there to catch you. And you can just hold it to your own risk. But the most important thing, make sure your feet are clean. If not, you're going to leave a nasty mark on the wall. So sooner or later, you're going to decide you want to start holding your handstand on the floor. So there are a couple different techniques that people use. Some people would rather go to a split handstand first and then go to a handstand. That is personally what I prefer because a split handstand is easier because your balance is centered. Have you ever seen like a tightrope person, how they hold the long poles? because it helps them keep their gravity centered. So some people like to go to the split and then go to the handstand. And some people just like to kick straight up and hold it there. But I'll show you both. So, the way to do it with the split handstand, doesn't matter how big your split is, you can be however flexible you want. You're going to kick up into your split then you're going to very slowly close using your finger and breathing techniques. So, <laughs> that is the handstand version. I mean, that is the split handstand version. Now I'm going to show you just the kick up version. So that I just kicked super hard and I squeezed really hard and I just used my fingers so that I didn't kick over. So those are two different methods. One of them is slow and controlled to make sure you have it and the other one is just quick but you have it controlled so you don't fly over. So if you're a gymnast like me, you might find it easier to do your handstand on the beam. Now, I think pretty much all my friends would rather do their handstands on the beam because, as you can see, it's only four inches and it has an angle so you can grab the end of it like this. So, it puts less strain on your fingers and your wrists because on the floor, your fingers are so bent up this way and on the beam, it's easier to grip and save yourself. So. I'm going to show you guys how to kick up to a handstand on the beam because it is very different. And I'll show you the way that I do it. <laughs> so, when you kick up to do a handstand on the beam, you're going to want to start the same way that you start on the floor. But before you put your hands down, you're going to do a half turn and do half of a cartwheel to a handstand. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. I just did a half 
turn, and I went up to the cartwheel. That does take a lot of practice because it is kind of difficult to stop in the middle of your cartwheel, but I believe in you. Now, the way I do it, as I said earlier on the floor, I like to go from my split up to a handstand. That's not the way that many people do it, but I just decided to do that because, I don't know, I'm just lazy sometimes to do it the normal way. So this is the way that I do it. So I just decided to do it that way because I think it's more controlled when I come up and I just like to be really still. Also, super quick tip on handstands on bars, you're going to want to push as tall as you can, unlike the beam where you're like looking at your hands, on bars you want to be super tall to show your line. So this is what that looks like. So here is a normal handstand. Here is a handstand on bars. Normal handstand, bars. <laughs> so as you can see, slight difference, but it does make a difference in your gymnastics when you're doing it. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope it helped you improve your handstands. And always remember to practice, 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 because practice makes perfect. I love you guys so much, and I'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs> Maddie Ziegler, I'm coming for you. <laughs> Better watch out. Okay, let's start.